Glory, glory, glory. We just praising God. We magnify him. We adore him. I am super, super, super excited uh, today. We have a new planter with us and I am so excited. I'm going to introduce her slightly and then I'm going to get out the way. And I say slightly because she wears so many different hats. Our planter today is in love with the bridegroom king. Jesus. She's an evangelist, an intercessor, co-pastor. She is the wife of Bernard Crawford Jr., the senior pastor of House of Prayer Evangelistic Church in Kansas City, Kansas. She is my kingdom sister and friend. Please welcome me in welcoming evangelist Trina Crawford. I'm out of the way. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Have your way, have your liberty in the Lord. Praise God, praise God. Pastor Faye, I am so grateful to have been afforded this opportunity and I don't count it a small thing been asked to serve on such a phenomenal platform. What I have noticed in your life and the lives of those who you have invited on this platform, this forum, is that the, the Holy Spirit is evident in your lives. Mm -hmm. um, I began to ponder what the Spirit of the Lord wanted to talk about today. And as I began to ponder it, Pastor Faye, I will tell you the warfare ensued. I will tell you that I was met with all kind of adversity. The adversary, he actually turned the heat up. It was as though he was playing the part of the king when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mm, were mm, placed mm, in the fire. Mm. And the king said, turn it up more and with the hope to consume. But what he didn't understand is that they weren't in a consuming fire. They were in a refining fire, a fire that would refine their faith and cause their faith to penetrate not just their lives, but right. the life of the king himself. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you the amazing part about God is that he begins to stand with us when our adversary begins yes. to turn up the fire. Mm -hmm. And that is such a phenomenal thing because it's then that we see the express glory of God on our lives. It's then that we see those things that were meant for bad turn for the good. We begin to see them work for the good. And I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so grateful that God loves me, but I'm more, I'm even more grateful that he's given me the opportunity to love him. And you, so you know again, what, I want to thank you. You're, you're breaking up. You're beginning to break up. And I, I don't, man, I, I don't know. If this, huh? Of course, I, of course I am. I'm going to, I'm going to go on my phone. Give me a second. We're going to, okay. it's more okay. ways to skin a cat than one. That's what I heard. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. That's we have to go I another, heard. another avenue. We, we're not discouraged. We're heard. not we're discouraged. Gonna get, we're going to fix this situation. But I sensed that you were really going through when, when you sent me back what the Lord had given you. I said, oh, Hallelujah. my God. And I was praying for you. But I, I, I sensed that. I sensed that. But he's defeated. He's a liar. And he's not even really a distraction. For real. For real. So praise God. Do you need me to send you a text? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Just roll with us a few minutes. We're going to. See if we can get this uh, straightened up a little better. The Lord wants to release something to us, to us, to us, all of us, all of us, all of us. And I'm excited about what he wants to say. Anytime he wants to say, I want him to speak. Pastor Faye, can you just pray in the atmosphere? Can you sure, just pray? Sure. Bless you, God. We just bless your wonderful name. We exalt you. Praise you, we magnify you, we adore you, we welcome your will, we welcome your spirit, we welcome, yes, Lord, your glory, yes, Lord, your glory, the whole earth is filled with your glory, the whole earth is filled with your glory, the whole earth is filled with your glory, glory. we want to say what we hear the spirit saying, and the spirit is saying, the whole earth is filled with your glory, we don't need to talk about this, that, and the other, we need to say what the spirit is saying the 
whole earth is filled with your glory. Thank you that you've made the promise that in the last days you would pour out your spirit on all flesh, excluding none, drawing all, wooing all. Thank you, God, correcting all, aligning all, cleansing all. Have your way. Have your way. Thank you. Thank you, God. We just welcome your river. We welcome your flow. Holy Spirit, you are the true teacher. You are the true speaker. You are the true voice of God. Speak as only you can. Have your way. Thank you that the distractions are moved. The mountain, get out of the way. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just magnify you. We exalt you because you are God. All of the other gods of the nation are idols, but it is you that have made heaven and earth. So we exalt you. We, we, we exalt you. We boast in you. We magnify you. We make you larger than anything that's going on. Greater are you that's within us than anything that's going on in the world. We're already ruling and reigning. We're already more than conquerors. We are, you always cause us to triumph. So God, we just say thank you. We just bless you we magnify you we 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 praise you we praise you we thank you we thank you for the word that's coming forth the word that's coming forth the word that will be delivered and we just thank you lord we thank you we thank you we bless you we bless you we bless you we say thank you lord hallelujah to your name, your name, your name, your name. Every knee bows and every tongue confesses. Every life and everything is made conducive. You are Lord. Have your way, Lord. <laughs> Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. All right. <laughs> I've always heard that there is one, more than one way to skin a cat. And so to God be glory for um for the the technology that he's afforded us mm -hmm. and as i said there were so many disruptions in the spirit the moment i began to hear god clearly express what he wanted me to share and convey today again i want to um you know repeat to you that i'm grateful for this opportunity to sit mm -hmm. on this platform because I realized that there are a multiplicity of people, a plethora of people who could have had this opportunity on this day, on mm -hmm. this month, to mm -hmm. share God's infallible word. And so I don't count it a small thing, Pastor Faye, that you have called upon me. And so I just wanna say that God is faithful. Mm -hmm. And even in the midst of the adversities, I understood that the only time that Satan tries to come and steal, kill, and destroy is when there is absolutely something on your life. So I realized that there has to be something on you and I, amen, for him to try to come and disrupt, to take time out of his schedule, to try to come and disrupt what God wants to say to, there must be something on our mouths. So before I get started with anything, I want to go before the throne of grace because God is the principal one. He's the one who is in, in control. And so eternal God, we come thanking you for being God. You are God alone. And so with that, God, we say thank you. We acknowledge your sovereignty. We acknowledge that you are all powerful. You are almighty. God, we, we acknowledge that there is absolutely nothing impossible for you. Absolutely nothing that you cannot do. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will begin to move by your awesome spirit. Even in the airwaves right now, God, we ask that you would move. We don't want to attempt to do anything without you, God. Lord, because we recognize that the scripture says that all things are possible because of you. And so God, we thank you this moment. We give you praise, honor, and glory in this moment. God, you, Lord, let alone today, Heavenly Father, that this is the day that you have made and we've chosen to rejoice. But this moment, God, we say thank you. In this moment, we give you glory. In this moment, we give you honor. And God, in this moment, we give you praise. So even right now, God, we ask that you would go before us. Go, Lord, stand with us and then be our rear guard. Lord, be behind us. Watch behind us so that there will be no backlash from the enemy, so that no weapon that forms itself against us would be able to prosper, God. We stand in agreement with what your perfect will is. We don't always understand your way, the wisdom of your ways, God, because, Lord, sometimes you allow adversities to come. But we respect and honor, hallelujah, the perfect 
goodness, the perfectness of your will, God. We know, Lord God, that what you allow in our lives, God, you have great intentions for us. And so we thank you even right now in the matchless and perfect name of Jesus Christ. We say amen. I was saying before the enemy tried to be rude like he is and interrupt. I was saying that this past, the, the past week, I'm talking about he turned up the fire like the king did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He turned that fire up seven times hotter on me on this past week. And Dr. Fay, I promise, I said, listen here, devil, I realized that on the only reason you're coming for me is because I'm on assignment against every satanic principality. I'm on assignment for every ruler of darkness spiritual wickedness in high places. I am on assignment for it. He understood my assignment and so do I. And so because I understand the assignment, I'm going forth with what the spirit of the Lord has spoken to me. I know that God is a faithful God. I know him as a perfect God. I know him as a God who cannot, he's incapable. He cannot make mistakes. So whatever he allows in my life, it has good intentions. And so as hot as it got, <laughs> as hot as it was, I understood that he was with me. And just like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego had that fourth man in the fire and they said it looked like the son of man. I realized that it was him walking with me, walking me through the test and the trials. I understood that the fire I was in, just like them, was not a consuming fire, but it was a refining fire. It was a fire to purify. It was a fire that was intended to get some things right in me and around me. And a lot of times as believers, we don't want to go through the fire to get the things around us right and to get to get the things within us right. And so I thank God, even right now, I'm going to offer him a praise, hallelujah, for what he allowed me to experience on last week. He is faithful and he is just. And why would I not trust the just God to be with me in the midst of the fire. That's enough about me. There is a word from the Lord. There is indeed a word from the Lord. I want to give thanks to my husband for allowing me the opportunity to sit on platforms like this because he could be one of those pastors that quench the spirit and say, no, you go sit over there with your big hat on and your pretty dress. But I praise God that he is not holding me hostage like that. Amen, that he has not put a yoke on my neck to confine me to a pretty hat and a pretty dress. Amen, I am so grateful. Hallelujah, because I don't think I could be able to do good like that. I just don't think it would work out good. I really don't. So I thank God that he didn't put set himself up for failure, trying to hold me in a box. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Anyway, there is a word as I began to ponder what the spirit of the Lord wanted to talk about on this week, I began to consider God, which we should do in all things. But I considered God and I heard the Lord, he gave me a text first and I was like, well, Lord, you know, okay, that I believe that that's concurrent in the scripture. But in Matthew eleven fifteen, 15, I heard the Lord say, he who has ears, let him hear. And so I said, well, Lord, that's all through the text, all through the Bible, especially the New Testament. It's, it's a re resounding theme. It's if you got ears here, if you have ears, I want you to hear. And then I said, well, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? And he just gave me one word and the word was listen. And, and, and there was emphasis on the word, which implies that there has been a time that we have not been listening. So he gave me the word and he said, listen. And so I said, well, Lord, I'm listening. Your servant, listen. I kind of felt um, like many of the, uh, the prophets when, you know, he began to speak and they began to say, speak for I'm listening. And I um, kind of straightened my posture because I realized it was at that moment that, that if, we, if the Lord expresses something with intensity in, in an in italicized form, that I have not been doing it the way he wants me to do it. 
And a lot of times we um, are not vulnerable enough to say that, God, I have not been listening to you with clarity. I have not been listening to you with sensitivity. And I have not been listening to you to the point of complete obedience. We won't become that transparent in the body of Christ. We'll say, well, I can hear God for what he wants me to tell you for your life, but it's not so clear when it's talking about me. And I know I'm not alone on here on Facebook world where um, we have become so accustomed as prophets for hearing a word for everybody else. But when the spirit of the Lord begins to speak expressly to us, we don't hear him clear. It seems as if, our, as if our connection is like it was when we first came on this Zoom today. There was some static there. There was some interference there. There were some things blocking a pure and clear reception, amen, which was prohibiting us from getting our message across. Well, that is at that moment that we have to reposition and realign ourselves and use another means of hearing what God is saying so that we can be in proper alignment with what God is saying for this hour. You see, I've come to realize that in all essence, it's not just about me because what God is calling me to do ultimately affects everybody that I will come in close proximity with. It, 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 it affects my maximum impact. And if I fell in my maximum impact with the people who God has put in my path, then ultimately it affects their role in the kingdom of God. And there is too much and too many many of us minimizing the role that God has placed on our lives or the, the position or the accountability that God has placed on our lives and how it's going to impact someone else. Well, the word he said to me again was listen. So I began to listen and he said, um, he who has ears, let him hear. So as I said, I quickly began to search the scripture and I saw that text um, concurrently throughout the gospels. I saw Jesus when he began to teach, when he meant something, when he began to speak in parables, he would often climax that message by saying, he who has an ear, let him hear. Well, I could have went to several different themes in that, in that realm where it talks about he who has an ear, let him hear. But I got stuck with Matthew eleven fifteen, 15, where he began to talk uh, to the disciples. And let me read the text just for clarity and understanding. I'm going to put on my handy dandy glasses because sometimes age happens and you need them. All right. So if I look in the text in chapter 11, it said when Jesus had finished giving orders to his disciples, he moved on from there to teach and preach in their towns. When John heard, heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent message, a message by his disciples and asked him, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied to them, go and report to John what you hear and see. The blind see, the lame walk, those with skin diseases are healed. The deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor are told the good news. And if anyone is not offended because of me, he is blessed. Then he goes on and he says, as these men went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. And he said, what did you, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swaying in the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothes? Look, those who wear soft clothes are the kings in king's palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and for more than a prophet, this is the one it is written about. Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. I assure you among those born of women, no greater than John the Baptist has appeared, but the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Oh, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to give us some clarity. He said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been suffering violence. 
and the violent have been seizing it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, he's speaking of Malachi, he's speaking of all the prophets before time, amen, who spoke on the coming of the Messiah. If you're willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who is to come. Anyone who has ears should listen, should listen. And so in essence, what I believe that the scripture was saying through, the, through Jesus as John asked the question. Now, I, I kind of got baffled here because I thought about John asking this question. John, the one who was the baptizer of Jesus, the one who prepared the way, the one who was out in the wilderness crying loud and sparing not, saying, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. The one who was crying out until Jesus came to the water and he baptized Jesus in the Jordan and the spirit of the Lord fell down on Jesus and, and the spirit, the voice cried out from heaven. This is the one validating who Jesus was. This is the one in whom I am well pleased. This is the one. The validation happened at baptism. So here John is right now in this particular text in Matthew 11, saying to his disciples, go and ask Jesus, is he the one that we should be expecting or is there another? I looked around and I kind of said, Lord, what, what? And then I begin to think about when we fall into temporary eclipses because John is asking this, this question from a place of incarceration. And he's asking, is this the one who's able to save? And I can imagine him pondering in his mind, if he's able to save and if I'm the one who was called to prepare the way, can he come rescue me? And a lot of times as believers, we want God to step in and intervene and rescue us out of hard places when that is not the assignment. If the assignment has been fulfilled, we have to walk in whatever is attached to that assignment. And for John, it was incarceration and also death. It was imminent that he was going to face death. But I can imagine him thinking, if you're the Messiah, the one who was and is and is to come, then come get me. And just like him, Jesus, Jesus went on to tell, the, tell his disciples, he said this, he said, go tell John, this is what I want you to tell him, that you see lame people walking, you see blind people seeing, think about blind man Bartimaeus. Think about the lame man who was paralyzed from birth. Think about him. These are the ones you've seen healed. I want you to go tell John this is what's happening. He said, I want you to go tell him that the ones that have leprosy are being healed. I want you to tell him. And we are in a time where the Bible says um, that we, the kingdom of God, which we, you and I are a part of, is suffering violence. We're suffering persecution. We're suffering great adversities. It's not just the unjust who are dying because of COVID. It's the just. We see bishops. We see those who have preached the word in season and out of season, who have transitioned because of this affliction called COVID. The kingdom of God is suffering violence. But the violent take it by force. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that we get our, our physical sword out and we go cutting our people's head or we go to the doctors and tell them what we want to see. No, it means that we take this opportunity to share the infallible word of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, because the gospel still has power. We go share the gospel of Jesus Christ because there is still some wretched soul out there who needs to know that Jesus is the great Messiah, who needs to know that the Lord Jesus Christ is our redeemer. We go share the gospel. And so that means in times of affliction, when we are afflicted ourselves, we cannot, be, we cannot let up. We cannot back down. We are hard pressed on every side. Paul told the church of Corinth, he said, listen, we are pressed, we are afflicted, we got all kinds of stuff going on, but we are not forsaken and we are not abandoned. And for that cause, we continue to share this glorious message. 
I began to look up. I heard the spirit of the Lord say, Trina, go to um, the Hebrew calendar and see what the year 2022 means. And in the, in the Hebrew calendar, the year is 5782. And that year implies that it is the voice, the prophetic uh, meaning of that year implies that it is the time um, of the voice of the Messiah, the voice of the son of man. And I'm going to say this, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that when Jesus starts talking, that means somebody ought to start listening. Now, who's going to listen? That is the question that remains. Because last year was the year of the mouth on the Hebrew calendar. It was the year of the mouth and it was the mouth of God, the father who was speaking. He was not speaking rhetorically. He was speaking plainly to us as believers. He was telling us it was time for us to prepare so that we can become missional believers, so that we can have our focus on what, what is priority. He was trying to get us to understand that wisdom is the principal thing. We've been distracted by foolishness and mayhem. We have been distracted by entertainment in the house of God. We have been distracted by man's idea of church. We have been distracted by what we feel like we ought to be doing in the realm of services. We have been distracted by our programs. We have been distracted by our religion and the spirit of the Lord say I did not come to bring religion I have come so that my people can have relationship with me so that I can show them that they are mine by the love that we share because the love that is demonstrated from me to them we are to demonstrate it from ourselves to others it must be we must be conduits of the love of God and I will be the first to say that is sometimes the most daunting, most difficult, challenging task at hand is showing love to people who we don't feel deserves it. But huh, let's just take a moment and think about how much love we really deserve when we were in our stuff. If I take a look back at my life, I was a whoremonging, um, pimping, Stealing, prostituting. I wasn't a prostitute, but I was getting the money. So I might as well call it what it is. Amen. Some people call it a, a three letter word, H O E. Some people are technical with it and call it the five letter word, the W H O R E. Uh, but I was getting the money. So I didn't think I was that bad. I didn't think it was all that bad. But when he found me, I want to, can I tell somebody, give a transparent testimony? When I heard the voice of the Lord clearly for the first time, I was in the bed with a man I shouldn't have been in the bed with. And I heard the Lord clearly say, get up from here. I heard him and I thought somebody else was talking to me. I said, who else is in this house? I said, who, whose voice was that? I looked at him and he looked at me. I said, I got to get up and get out of here. He, I, I got picked picked up and brought over there. So I was like, if I get up, how I'm going to get home? I said, well, I'm going to need some money to get home. I'm trying to help somebody on here. I said, how I'm going to get home? The spirit of the Lord, I didn't know it was the spirit at that time, but the spirit of the Lord said, don't worry about that. Just get up. And I said, when I got up out that bed, I said, I need some money to get home. He said, it's on the dresser. Hey, he ain't never said that. So listen, I'm going to tell you how the spirit of God moves. When God meets you in your sinful state, you better listen. You better listen. He met me right where I was because he wanted to take me out of darkness and bring me into the marvelous light. But I had to listen. And just like me, you got to open up your spiritual ears. Even if you're in sin, you, God has given you ears to hear. He said, let he who has ears hear what the spirit is saying. Let me get back to John real quick. John got the report that Jesus was who he said he was because people were talking about the miraculous things that were happening. They seen the blind eyes open. They seen him take, oh, Todd, Pastor Todd, poor man, getting a rap for his demonstration. But listen, he was trying to let y'all know he should have just did some light spit. I ain't gonna get, even get there. Anyway, Pastor Todd just should have in his hand or some, but all that harking stuff, he was out of line. Anyway, that's a whole uh, story for another day. 
Anyway, the demonstration he was trying to show is that Jesus took some spit and some mud and he put it on a man's eye and made it salve for, he for healing. And the man was able to see. Go run and tell John that. Go tell John that I met a man by the pool called Beautiful. And he got up after years of affliction. He got up out of that affliction and he started walking. Hallelujah. Go tell him that people whose bodies were afflicted, they're being healed today. Go tell them. And he said, if anybody is offended by this, if they're not offended by this, then they're blessed. I wanna go to 2 Corinthians chapter four, I believe it is really quick because a lot of times we think that God is some hidden entity, but the scripture says that he's not hidden at all. If he is, he's hidden in plain sight. Have you ever looked for your glasses? Have you ever looked for your glasses and they were on your head? If I wasn't using my phone right now, I would say, have you ever looked for your phone and it was right there, you was on it? Oh, Jesus, I hope I ain't by myself, Jesus. Have you ever? Listen, I want to tell you that Jesus is not hidden. He's right here in plain sight. But if by chance, he's hidden. Let me tell you why he's hidden. If, if you feel like he's been hidden, if you feel like he's been missing, if you feel like you can't see him, let me tell you why. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He says this in his word. He said, therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not give up. Remember in the afflictions that I told you about. We don't give up. He said, instead, we have renounced shameful secret things. When I got up out that bed, because I heard a voice that wasn't my own, I heard the audible voice of Jesus and I listened and I got up out that bed. I think if I would have stayed there, laying there after I heard his voice, that would have been the end of what God had called me to. But because I got up, that was the pivotal moment in my life and changed my very course of my existence when I got up out that bed. He said, we have renounced the shameful secret things, not walking in deceit or distorting God's message. But in God's sight, we commend ourselves to every person's conscience by an open display of truth. But, but if, in fact, our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Regarding them, the God of this age has blinded the mind of the believers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we are not proclaiming ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves because of Jesus. For God who said, light shall shine out of darkness. He has shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. So now Paul goes on to tell them that we have these treasures in, in clay jars. So, so here's what Jesus was saying in essence to John, he was trying to get John and the disciples to hear what was happening in the spirit. He says to them, he says, Jesus began to speak to the crowds. You didn't go to the wilderness looking for just any man. You didn't go to the wilderness just looking for a man who had on fine raiment. John was in a uh, locust, he was eating locusts and then wild clothes he just he was half naked out there but he was preaching the gospel of jesus christ he was preaching the coming of christ he didn't want people to get caught up in his garment and that's what we've reduced the church to we've redu reduced the church to our apparel we've reduced the body of christ to our programs we've reduced the uh, the body of Christ to vain oblations and sa vain sacrifices. In Isaiah, he said, I'm not, I'm not thrilled with your vain sacrifices and your vain oblations. I don't, I don't even need that. He, I, he said in the book of Isaiah, I don't even need what y'all pouring out. 
In reality, what we've been offering God stinks. And so the spirit of the Lord has been speaking to us last year. The mouth of God was speaking. This year, the voice of the son is speaking. I can't help but think that next year, the voice of the spirit will be speaking. And that is completion. Listen, we have to adhere to what the spirit of the Lord is saying to us. He's saying, listen. And when I looked up that word, listen and hear, they had the same meaning in the Greek. It means to properly to hear God's voice, which prompts him to birth faith with, within us. And then I began to look up the importance of hearing and listening. The ideal is to change the perception of the one who has an ear to hear. I, it's going to blow your mind in a minute because the spirit of the Lord had me look up the ear, the three parts of the ear. There was the outer, the inner, the outer, the middle, and the inner. And I began to think when I saw this picture of the ear that it reminded me of, of the tabernacle. It reminded me of the outer court. It reminded me of the outer court and how we right here at this, this point, we have to guard what goes into our ear gate because what goes into our ear gate has the potential to go into the inner court. And if we don't guard what goes into the inner court, then the chances of us getting into, into the middle court, the chances of us getting into, hallelujah, the whole holies of holies are minimal. And so I began to think about how the enemy tries to come and cause ringing and disruption right here in this middle to try to get us off balance. Because if we can't hear right, then our balance is off. Our equilibrium is off and it keeps us unstable. If you ask somebody who falls down a lot, why do you fall so much? They'll tell you that they have hearing problems. And the spirit of the Lord told me to tell you today that the problem with the church is that we have had hearing problems, which has caused us to be unstable, which is why we keep on falling. You're not going to find this on Google. You're not going to find this in no textbook. You're going to find this by the power of the spirit. Hear me by the spirit. The church's equilibrium and, and ability to hear has caused us to be imbalanced, which keeps on making us fall into sin, which keeps on making us fall into waywardness, which keeps on making us fall into complacency, which means it keeps on making us fall into idolatry, which keeps us keeps on making us fall into unrighteousness. But I declare under the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost that that spirit of us not listening clearly is being broken off, is being dismantled, is being destroyed in the name of Jesus. The spirit of the living God is about to disrupt the assignment of the enemy that is keeping us from hearing clearly so that when we guard our out gate, the outer gate of our ears, we have the potential to hear what God is saying when we wash at the laver, when we begin to uh, purify ourselves at the brazen altar so that we can get into the inner court, so we can get divine revelation from God. Shake it, Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Somebody on here is saying, Sister Trina, I need divine revelation for the season that I'm in. I'm going to tell you that you aren't the only one. I declare and decree under the anointing of God that the church needs divine revelation. We can't live without it. Jesus said, I don't, um, the father said, excuse me, God said, I don't do anything in Amos. He said, I don't do anything without first revealing it to my prophets. The problem with him revealing it to the prophets is that we have to have an ear to hear what the prophets are speaking. This is the apostolic age. The prophets are being awakened and then the, the apostles, we got to have a mindset to hear what the apostles, the prophets and the teachers are speaking. 
because they are work, working in conjunction with each other to equip us in this hour to do what God is requiring us to do. But if we don't have an ear to hear, we won't have the right perception. We won't be able to perceive the ability to see what is perceiving, the, the ability to see, the ability to hear, and the, the ability to become aware of something through the senses. It's the state or being of, of being or process of becoming aware of something. We've been in a season, church, where we have seen things, but we've not been aware of what God is doing. And I just declare and decree that that season is coming to an end. I release under the anointing of God that our ears will hear. We will become a people who will listen because the kingdom of God is suffering violently. But the violent, the ones who have been chosen, we will hear God. And as a matter of us hearing God, we will have revelation of what God is doing. We will be a part of that revelation. We will be a part of that work and that assignment that God is doing. I declare and decree it. I release it under the anointing of God that we are in the hour where we will begin to do what God said do. That is my time. But I pray that something has been said that will help you get to your next because God wants to use you as you become a listener. As you become a hearer, you will become a doer. He said, not just the hearers, but the doers of his word. This is the hour where Jesus is speaking. He's not some hidden entity. He's not behind a veil. The only way that he's veiled is if you are an unbeliever and you are not in the kingdom. But even if you are, at that point where you're not attached to the kingdom. This is an opportunity for you get to know him. If you wanna to get to know him, all you have to do is confess him as Lord and savior. All you have to do is say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins. Wash me, live in me, let your spirit live in me so that I may do your will. This is that hour and this is that time. I yield the floor to you, Pastor. Ooh. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I, I have nothing else to say. The Lord has spoken. And the church just needs to say amen. And as she said, if you're not in the church, this is your time. This is your time. This is your opportunity. This is your window. And even in the church, those of us that have been believers, in word only, this is our opportunity for repentance. I'm reminded over in Revelation when he was talking about repentance, he wasn't talking to the world, he was talking to the church. And if the church would come into alignment, it would make the difference on the world. We need ears to hear what the spirit is saying. And we're not talking about you gonna hear like evangelist Trina, or you gonna hear like this one or that. Just develop your ear with what he has said. And the way we begin to develop our ear is by doing what he has said. And despising not the day of small beginnings, but obedience is better than sacrifice. My God, this is the year of the ear. The Messiah is speaking. And God is saying, listen, be attentive and move at what I'm saying. Pastor Faye, matter of I'm life and death. Come on. If I may, you know, when you look at Revelations where he said, Revelation, when he said to the churches after he conveyed a message to them through the spirit, he, he, he talked to every church. He talked to all seven churches and he was very plain and very frank about what he wanted to express to them. He spoke to their condition. He spoke to their heart. He spoke to their senses. And when he began to speak to their senses, he reiterated, he said, if you have an ear, hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And so to us as the church, it's no different in this hour. He's saying, if you can hear me, 
If you can hear me, if you desire to hear me, hear what I'm saying to the point, not only to where you have knowledge, but to where you have revelation and wisdom and apply that truth to what you have to, to your lives. And so it's the time of application. We, we've gone past just knowledge. My husband's been preaching a series about head knowledge versus heart knowledge. Mm. And so it's time to get, get past the head knowledge because head knowledge has gotten the church in trouble. Head knowledge has caused us to be crippled. Head knowledge has caused us to be prideful and puffed up. But it's the time when we have to go beyond the head knowledge and get to the heart, the matters of the heart. He's saying, listen, we got to guard our hearts with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life. He's saying, get to the principal thing, which is wisdom. And wisdom is knowledge applied. And that's what God is calling for us as the church. He talked to, he talked to those seven churches and he dealt with every area concerning their lives so that they couldn't try to guess what their condition was. God ain't causing us to guess in this hour. He's making it plain where we are. We ain't got to try to assume nothing. We don't have to assume because he's speaking clearly, pastor. He's telling us our condition. He's showing us our condition. And he's saying, now it's time to get it right. Get your ears right. Unstop your ears. Get you some blessed oil. Pour it in your ears and get your ears right. Unstop them deaf ears. Amen. 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 Please share this on your page. Somebody needs to hear this word from the Lord. Share it on your page. Share it on your page. Share it on your play it again and again and again. Play it again and again and again until the spirit arrests you and you can begin to hear and heed what he's saying. Wow. Didn't she pull out that chart? Didn't she pull out that chart? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. When she when she went there and started talking about the tabernacle. Anyway, let me get out of here. Oh, I call her Pastor Trina because I've seen her out in the streets loving on people and helping people and being a voice for the people. I appreciate your life. I appreciate you. I, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening and for sharing. Thus says the Lord. We bless God and we thank him. You're quite welcome. See you again next, next time, Facebook. Wow.